We're gonna go live now, bingo! Here's a little tidy area. So it's all going. Just waiting for it to come on. Yep. There we go. We're live. Hello, Are we live? Everybody. Hello, everybody. Make us big and hope we don't go a funny colour. Yeah, it's working. I've got halos in my eyes. You got you got the alien eyes. Yeah, we haven't got Paul today. He's got a, a council meeting today. Oh, so, now they tell me. me. Yeah. Oh no. So I have to be. I'm doing comments today because. Pip's going to do something really special. So somebody's joined us. Oh, a couple of people have already joined. If you could say hello to us. Let us know you can see, see and hear us. us. Hello. Like the lighting right. <laughs> Paul's not here. <laughs> we always I'm get sure he'll tell us it's okay. Hi, Deborah. Thank you. I hope you can see us and we're all doing good. So um, I'm very excited today, as yes. usual. Yeah. I'm excited because... Sis is going to be doing all the work today, and I'm going to do the comments. Yeah, so questions. she gets a little bit break. Hi, Deborah. So we just go away. Oh, we've just got a couple of minutes, and then we'll get started. Yeah, then we'll get started. Yeah. Right. So people are just starting to join. Have you posted the link? Have I posted a link? I will post a link if you don't mind. So Pip's just going to post the link out on the site. So hi, Dan, Janet. Thank you for joining us as always. I hope you're all well. I hear the weather's turned a little bit in England. Um, and here. And here, actually. So it's oh, not so nice. good. But it's all fine. So today we're just going to be doing some Stamperia Forest tag. Pip's going to be doing that. Hi, Janet. And we're also going to share some transfer gel with you today. So anybody who hasn't used that, next week's techniques are all going to be about transfer gel. That's on fabrics, on glass, on metal, on wood. So that's what we're going to be doing next week and showing you some examples of what you can do with transfer gel. I know a few of you have already got it. I know a few of you wanted to use it but didn't know how to. So we thought that was a really good Hi, one for the next one to use. So hello everybody who's joining us. Hi Gail. <laughs> We're rubbing our hands down. Oh, I don't know. I got stuff on my hands. It's very cold today. So, yeah. So, shall we get started? Um, a few people, a few, few more minutes? Yeah, we can give a few more minutes. Um, just shared. Oh, thank you, Janet, for sharing. Good morning, Gail. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, so, I've, while we're just waiting for the people to join up, should we just talk about... We'll show the, the fox now, and then yeah. you can show it again at the Yeah. Start. So Anybody today, what we're going to be it. doing is creating this box. Now, um, <laughs> my flowers aren't all completed today. I just coloured them with the stress outside. In fact, I was just doing it right now. Um, Dali locked us out the workshop yesterday. <laughs> and I then do. she must have got panicked because she went and got my dad. And then they tried to open the lock on um, the workshop because we were all waiting to watch a movie. And so an hour and a later, we got it figured out. Thank God we have an outside door that comes into the workshop area. So I didn't get my flowers colored. She did offer to do it. My dad offered to do it. But I, those of you it's that know very me, particular. I'm very particular with my work. So today we're going to be, uh, hi, Judy. Um, we're going to be working on this tag. So a couple of techniques that we're going to do. I mean, everybody knows about the distress oxides, but I'll show you how I color my flowers. Um, today is really about... Uh, creating that crackle look but we're using a vintage paste which is actually an antique paste umbra which come in many colors and I'll talk about that and I can probably grab a few of the different colors too just to show what we have yeah, definitely so this is what we're creating today a really cute fox this is actually a really big tag so I <laughs> this is a 12 by 6 tag 12 inches by six. So that's what we're going to be doing. Yeah, so things hanging off. Yeah, that would be me rushing. Oh, I think, I, look, see, this is what I do. I, I do my placement and then I forgot to glue this guy down. There <laughs> we go, he's right there. Okay, so that's what we're doing today. And um, in terms of what we're gonna be using is we have our, we have our, are a big tag and Dali actually brought these over for me I think I've got a few left <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, 
My um, Pippa stamp here, it's called Venture Into the Wild. I just love the sentiments on it. So I just, I'm just using the sentiments of this stamp. It's uh, Roam Yonder and Venture Into the Wild. So I already have those um, stamped. And there's such a nice uh, script yeah, on them. Lovely, aren't they? Have those stamped. And all I've done is gone around them with some Walnut Stain Distress ink on some white cardstock so those are going to be my sentiments today um some good old grass and um a bunch of embellishments and the little birdie wooden birdies and logs and today i'm going to show you how you can actually um elevate your tag with some more um different um, sentiments and things I've cut out. So I've got foxes, hedgehogs, I've got leaves, I've got some deer, I've got some squirrel, these are all dallies, uh, i got a little bear, and I'm just going to show you how you can even take it, oh we got a nice birdie here, how you can even take it to the next level. Now, those of you who've got the kit, most of you already have the forest pad, so the first pad will have all these elements. Um, when I posted the tag, the papers that were single, uh, so people didn't want to cut into their pad or they wanted extra papers, they started ordering the single sheets. So this is a sheet that I'm using today. It's the Fox. So that's one single sheet. And the elements uh, that we're using are of this single sheet which is just gorgeous. So if you don't want to cut into your pad or if you want extras, these are brilliant sheets to have. I do have to tell you the fox, I think I've got two left and I've got a uh, few more of these ones left. And then this one's gorgeous. Um, it's got a really big squirrel, which you could, like yeah, you, which you could make the centerpiece of your tag also. So just want to show you those papers. Again, I have a maybe a couple of the fox and uh, I do have the squirrel and the other one but they're great for building up your tag and um, and they're great for um, just playing around so that's what we're doing this morning and I'm gonna take you through it bit by bit um, like I said I've already started coloring my flowers this morning I have like loads here uh, they're not all done um, but I do like it when you kind of have the white aspect in your tag too, if you want to brighten it even more. So we can talk about that as we get going. Yeah? Mm, definitely. I'll talk about the colors I used on the Distress Oxides. And then Dali was going to talk um, a little bit about uh, next week's Facebook Live. Um, we're going to actually, I mean, I don't even have these on my website. <laughs> Because I know as soon as I put them up, they'll be gone, and we really wanted to demo them. Um, again, Paul's been kind enough to send me some uh, sample each for me, and I think we've only got like four or five pots of each yet, because I always like to work with them, see if they work, and kind of test them, and make sure that the customer's getting a quality product, and Pentar never have to worry. So one is Express Transfer. It looks like this. And that is Pentart, right? Yeah, that's Pentart. And this one will give you a vintage finish. So not a crisp finish, but a vintage finish. Like a distress kind of yeah, finish? Yeah, like a distress. So, yeah. Like, yeah. And it's really, it, as its name suggests, it's express. It's instant. It is so quick to do. And you can do it on any surface. So fabric, canvas, glass, cardstock, glass, metal. Yeah, wooden. Wow. Wooden, yeah. So, and, and the nice thing about this one... Um, when I've seen it working, is is that that you don't have to goop it off. You no. just you just put it down like a solvent, and yeah, you just paint it. You just literally paint it down um, like a liquid, mm -hmm. and then you just use a um, either a burn folder or a lollipop stick. A lollipop so like stick. you would do a transfer, like you would do a transfer, like a rub-on transfer, rub-on rub transfer. Okay, so that's that instant. one. So and then these are brand new to me um, again. And we have two of these. These are actually Stamperia uh, transfer gels. The black one is for uh, the black one is for any and every surface, and the blue one is 
specifically <laughs> for fabric. fabric. Yeah, because obviously fabric needs to adhere. The big um, bottles. The big bottles. <laughs> and you need a laser printout. That is essential. So to do any of these techniques, it has to be laser printed, your image. So whether it's a photograph, and it's, it can't, doesn't have to be black and white, it can be colour. Now, mm. Stamperia also do all the black and white transfers. They are absolutely beautiful. I have some of those somewhere. You have some of those somewhere. Somewhere. So we've already <laughs> I got haven't put them on sheets. the site. <laughs> and I know we've got loads back in the UK. I, I, I don't know if they're on the site either. But I know at least one is. So they are what we would be using, or if you have a laser printer, which most of us do these days, um, just print a black and white image or a colour image. So if you've got a photograph of your grandchildren, you want to put it onto a cushion cover, or you've got a um, an old photograph that you want to put onto a tag, this is the product to use. These are the products. Um, so I would definitely recommend those and we will be showing you. Oh, excellent. You've got some beautiful ones. Oh, there. I've got some beautiful ones. And again, I only got so many because I always like to test out. But I'm going to tell you, um, these are not on the website because I know as soon as we were going to go live today, they were going to be gone on the website. And you guys, our followers, always get first pick. So this one is really nice. There's going to be a mirror image. Um, oh, for you guys, it's not. So this is really neat if you're doing like a chalk kind of, I think. You get your... two sheets, so the reverse, it's two this... actual physical sheets. So this is the back of it, right? And this that's would right. be the front? Yeah. So, so that's you get two one actual set. sheets and everything has already been reversed for you. So when you have lettering and you have to put it down, it would be the wrong way. So that's something you need to do if you're printing yourself, is to actually reverse that image. Now these have already been done for you they're already available so you can see like the word when you see it you see it the unicorn the right way around whereas when we see it because you're seeing the mirror image of it is the wrong way around so that goes for all the all the world's wording and these are absolutely beautiful so where you find it difficult maybe to stamp onto something these are ideal so and for t-shirts bags, bags fabric bags card making um, love making the wooden boxes with these. Yeah, they're really nice, yeah. nice. Only got two each of these ones. Uh, so, so that's what we're going to be doing next week. So keep your eyes open for that. And we'll probably share a couple of images with you as well. So if you want to download your own image, um, I'll design something. So we'll just keep your eyes posted on our Facebook pages and we'll share all of that information with you yeah. for next week. Hi Terry, hi Pat, hi, hi Gloria. Hi everybody. Okay, so, so there you have it. So um, in terms of those products, if you need them, you let me know or let just put it in the comments or message. Um, there's just, like I said, I don't have very many and I didn't want to put them on the website because they'll be gone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna go and do the comments. So you're gonna go do the comments. Dali's gonna go do the comments and gonna I'm share. gonna get going. And with the fiasco we had last night with the workshop door getting locked, um it's not that I'm not prepared. Um I just might be a little bit longer than I normally am. <laughs> okay, so let's get going. So just a reminder, we're working on this today, and today is really about um, the crackle effect and using the Penta Antique, um, oh, Dali, what's it called? Antique Paste Umbra. Now, there are a whole bunch of other colors, and then when we Dali has a moment, she's gonna go grab me all the colors. Oh hint, hint. Um, they're just by the waxes. Mm -hmm. um, so Antique Paste comes in lots of different colors. Um, the one we're going to be using today is called Umbra and antique paste is not like a wax paste it is almost like an oil based and the difference in this is is that it allows you to rub it back off usually I use patina liquid which is solvent based it's very very smelly um, so if you're allergic or sensitive to smells, then antique paste is the way to go. So Umbra is the color I'm using. And again, it allows you to rub off but stays in the crevices. Now the other colors that we have in these are white. We have brass, which is gorgeous. Ooh, look at this gold. So you have them there. 
And Dolly's working hard. Oh, I love this one. Antique copper. Maybe I should use this one. Oh no, I'll stick to true to the tag. And I think is that it? Yeah, I think oh, so. there we go. So we have quite a few of these um in stock. And yeah, Umbra would be the other one. So let's get started. So this is our tag. It's grey on one side, it's white. Do you guys call this grey board in England? Yeah, grey board with a white finish. Grey board with a white finish here. I would just say it's a really thick chipboard. Okay, so I'm going to start off with my Stamperia sheet here. And I'm just going to bring the computer down so you can watch what I'm doing. Okay. I think you can see what's going on there. So here's my tag. And for me, um, anybody that knows me, I'm not really good with measurements. So basically, all that I do is I turn this this way. And I'm just make life easier. I just go to the edge of the paper here. And I just mark around where I need my tag cut. So I'm just going to do this. And then I'm going to do that. So there we have it. That means I only have to cut three sides. I can't even see where that line is. Oh, there it is. Okay, so I'm just going to cut that. So don't mind me while I bring out my big machine in your face here. I keep losing my line. It's right there. You're going to keep your fox because we're going to cut him up in a bit. We're going to chop him up. And we're just going to come here. Get the top of the tag. Don't get rid of anything. You can use it. And then we're just going to come slice off the sides. Anything you have left over, you can take it off with an exacto knife anyway. And then do the other side, and that's it. So if it's a little bit big or a little bit small, it's really not going to matter because we're going to cover it up. And again, um, if it if it's slightly bigger or smaller, um, I just come in with an exacto knife when I've dried it, and then I just come in and take the excess bits off. Hi, Sheila. Okay, so hi, Sheila. So next step, I'm going to just take some glue. And we are going to put the glue down on the tag. So we're just going to come in. doesn't have to be super thick because you don't want it bubbling or anything. And I just like to go over the whole tag. Can you see, Dali? Perfect. Okay. The lighting's lovely. Everything's perfect. I can see Paul it. would be happy? Very happy. Typical. When he's not Typical here. man. Mm. Oh, he's going to watch us later, so we got to be nice. Yeah, we'll be nice. <laughs> We're always nice to him. <laughs> Obviously, I'm doing this really super fast. Um, take your time at home. Those who have the kit, um, just remember you can you have come back and you can watch this. You don't have to do it with us as we go along. But I know a few of you um, do like to go as we go along. Get those. Such a lovely paper, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, Forest is really nice. I've got actually so many orders for the um, 8x8 lately. 8x8s are getting really popular. Yeah, very much so. Much more. We're getting more and more 8x8 yeah. orders. Um, I like the single sheets too, though, because yeah, it just you gives do. you that extra yeah. embellishment. Dali just gets into the book and chops it up. I'm so scared. So for me, the little 8x8s work perfectly. 
and, and the uh, sorry the single sheet so you're just gonna place that down and put it where you want it and again this is just a project using um, pretty much just one sheet so just smoosh that down and look you can leave the tag as it is and just put on some uh, just put on some sentiments it would still look so nice I'll put a picture of yourself there, maybe a camping picture or something. There's so many options that you can do with this. So, um, as I can see, I have a, I oh, need to put a little bit of glue here. I'm gonna put that glue away. And then once that is down, just check. Now, some of you are precision cutters, so you won't have this issue. I'm not a precision cutter, so I usually have to um, just go around my board and cut off the access. I can't even cut straight by the looks of it. <laughs> Okay, so this is how much I was off. Not too much, not too bad, not too bad. Okay, and then, once you've done that part, is you're going to, this is my genius way, I just come in and I just uh, put my pencil through there and that's it. There you go. And so you have your tag. Okay, next step. Next step, what you're going to do is you are going to bring in your Pentart primer. Crackling paste primer. Now, with this, what I did was I just randomly went around in um, the different areas of the tag. Um, I just wanted to kind of go on the outside. So what you're going to do, you're just going to come in and you're just going to put this down wherever you want to put it. There's no rhyme or reason for it, uh, really. I mean, you could put it down the middle of your tag there if you wanted to. But I just kind of wanted to put it around the tag. Now, with the primer, it's you're going to think that you can't see it. Um, but what's actually going to happen is, is that you will have a glossy shine to it. So you'll know exactly where you put this. Okay. You just come around the tag. And even though you're going to cover the bottom with the grass, it doesn't really matter because you still want to put it there because I just like to have that texture there and also if there's a piece of the grass that's kind of missing um, you can also see the crackle underneath it so you're just going to keep coming across um, you don't have to do it all down the side you can leave some areas out uh, again I'm going super fast um, I would probably think this out a little bit more uh, when I'm taking my time to do this. So I don't just have straight lines everywhere, but in the interest of time, and it is alive, we will just go with, with whatever we end up with. Right, Dali? I'm sure it will look good. Oh, definitely, 100%. <laughs> okay. So there you have it. That's all you're doing. And as this dries, it will um, get shiny. I missed a bit down here. So beautiful. Okay. Love this technique. Thank you. Um, find some paper towel here. Yeah, you'll see me uh, <laughs> bending over here. <laughs> I just want to dry these brushes. Um, as you guys know, uh, Dali and I just keep using the same brushes over and over again for every product we use. Um, Pentop products are water-based, so it makes life a lot easier that you can just wash, clean your brushes, and reuse them for your next um, product. Okay, so now we're down to that bit. Now, with this, 
what you can do, um, as many of you know, one of the reasons we work with Pentar and we love their products is, is because they truly are set and made and have the right chemicals and ingredients in them to work with a heat tool. Because everybody knows that mixed media takes a lot, long time to dry. So um, that's one of the reasons we love working with them, because it means we can get on with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this a quick blast and I'm going to be quiet while I do this, because otherwise there'll be too much noise. <laughs> Okay, so this is nice and dry now. Now, the next step is the crackling paste. They just come in a duo. And there's two, there's two, this is one that's just about done. So we'll open a new one. <laughs> we use a lot of crackle paste. <laughs> Make sure this is crackling paste. Clean my scissors because I'm poking holes everywhere. Okay, so here we have the crackling paste. So I'm going to try and show you if I don't know. There is a shimmer where the um, primer is. Maybe you can't see it on here, but there's a slight shimmer to where the primer is so you know where you went. Now, if you want micro mini, if you want micro mini little um, cracks, then you're going to come in with a brush over the primer. If you want the bigger cracks, then you're going to come in with a spatula. Okay, so I'll do both. I'll do um, both here. I will do some little thin ones in certain areas that I want it. Then you're just going to kind of go over where you had your primer. And this will actually start drying as I'm actually speaking to you. Yes, as you can see it. <laughs> can you see it cracking? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's if you want to just have very minute little cracks. Because you apply it with a brush, whereas a lot of people also can apply it with a palette knife if you want to get your cracks. Yeah, so that part is just going to be the brush. You're right, Dali. And now I will come in with my palette knife. And all you're going to do is do this. And you're just going to just come in wherever you kind of just willy-nilly want this. It's willy nilly a word. Just mm. continuing to go over where um, you can see your primer kind of shining. Let will see if I can turn this around so you can see. So I'm just coming in. You really, the more random you kind of go on this, the more random your cracks will be. Okay, and you're just gonna continue working. And I'm gonna now. Normally I wouldn't leave that big of a space, but I'm going to leave that there because I, I want to be able to show you guys um, what it looks like when you don't have like the super thick 
um, cracks on there. Okay, so you're gonna keep going around to wherever you have your primer. And holding this awkwardly for the <laughs> camera. There you go. So just basically a big mishmash of primer and um, crackling paste. And then what you're going to do, we're going to, for this one, you can um, definitely heat dry this. I'm just going to set it aside and we are just going to move on to our next step. So let's just let that one dry. We can come to it with the heat gun if we need to. So once we have this, let's, again, I think I've said that about 10 times. Let's put it aside. If I can find some room here. Put that aside. And what we're going to do, the other sheet of the paper, we are going to fussy cut our fox out. So those of you who are following along and doing the tag, let's go ahead and fussy cut him out. Now, I'm not a big fan of fussy cutting, but um, what we'll do is go ahead and do it together. So I'm just gonna do a rough cut around him. I like to think that it's a good cut. For me, my saving graces is that when I go to distress it, any parts that don't quite look right, <laughs> I find that the distressing around it kind of takes that away. So I'm just going to go. And again, depending on the paper that you're using, um, the forest has um, many other little animals that you can use. We have lots of foxes in the UK. Yeah, you have lots of foxes in the UK. Mm -hmm. On the roads, for sure. Yeah. Always getting knocked over. Yeah, it's sad. My cheating way, just cut around like this. Okay, now you keep that piece of paper for tags or whatever you would like to do with it. And I'm just going to tidy him up here. Again, when you're at home, take your time. <laughs> Don't do what I do. A few people watching. Mm -hmm. beautiful tag. Dad loves it, doesn't he? Yeah, Dad's in love with this tag. Um, he does. He, he, he really, really loves his tag. I'm just going to take a little bit off there. Oh, and his ears. A foxy tag for all your foxy ladies. <laughs> May we all find a fox in our lives. Mm, maybe not. <laughs> okay, then just come in with your distress inks here. And I think this is the right one for this. I am using a walnut stain. And just come in, give him some definition around the edges, cover up some of those <laughs> mistakes that one might make. <laughs> no, not me. <laughs> not me. Yeah, that's that's what he always says, not me. So there you go. There's your fox. And really, that's the only element you're co cutting. Now, what you want to do with your fox is... Um, Ideally, you want to put down um, the 3D eyes and color his fur in first because he's flat. 
Um, but if I do that, I won't show you how I kind of curl him to give him definition. So I'm going to curl him first. So basically, you're just going to, because this is, um, is it 220 GSM? Stamp period paper? Um, it's uh, 190. 190. So because this is a really strong GSM, what you're going to find, he's really easy to curl and give some body. So you want to do this once your 3D pen has dried. But if you look at him now, you can see he's got this curl going on and he looks pretty um, puffy there. Okay, so that's what you want to do. So I'm going to flatten him out because I'm just going to show you what I did with my two 3D pens. My favorite pen is always a black because it gives him eyes. So what I went in and did was um, I came in and I just played around with his little hairs around his ears. I came to his little whiskers here and I went all the way around and this really just gave it a lot of definition. This just gave it some 3D definition. And I'll show you in a minute once I've got the white one down. So everybody's got a kit. We'll have these in their kit. And then and just kind of went around and just kept on continuing to give him definition. So I'll see if you can see that definition there on him. Maybe not because it is white. Okay, so once you've done that, you want to take your black 3D pen, my favorite pen to give little animals and people eyes, and these are self leveling. So any time that you use this pen, it will actually self-level into a dome. So if you were to put these dots, say, onto parchment paper, they will actually self-level into a 3D dome, and you can actually pick them off. So if I wanted to embellish him in this black more on the tag, I could just drop these drops on parchment paper or wax paper, and use them in my piece. Say like if you were getting blue eyes. Just imagine having the same blue eyes and then the same blue gems all over your piece. So there you have it. So we're going to let little, the foxy little man um, dry. I'll cut his legs off more than I did on the my other piece. But that's okay. So there we go. I now, see let's go back to our tag somewhere here. Let's <laughs> see how that's coming along. Okay, so that's coming along lovely. Um, you have a look here where I don't know if you can see that, Dolly. Uh, uh, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? So if you have a look right here, this is where the thinner primer was, and it's already uh, paste was crackle paste, and it's already started to crack. So it dries relatively quick. We've got some cracking going on down here already. So let's give this a nice blast with the heat tool. So you should be able to, can you see it? That's why I'm always opening new ones. You see how big these cracks are compared to the minute cracks? That's because you put it on with a palette knife. I mean, normally I like to let things naturally dry. Um, I'm not a big heat tool fan, but of course, in this instance, this is what we're having to do. Dali, you don't mind though, don't you? You like taking a heat gun and just getting it over and done with. No.
So, okay, this isn't like super 100% dry, but it, it will work for our purposes. So, I'm going to try and show you the difference between the baby cracks and then the big cracks that you put on with the spatula. So you can see those as you go down the tag. And then the same thing, here's a great um, comparison. Dali, I don't think you can see that. There's yeah, like the thin, thin yeah, ones so here. Yeah, so great. Clearly. And then the big it's ones so right beautiful. here. It's lit so well today, yeah. So personally, I would let this dry a little bit more or continue to dry it more. Um, but um, to continue moving on, this is what I do next. I'm going to use um, the Stamperia Aqua Color called Aquamarina. And I'm just going to bring a little brush. And I'm just going to bring it into the crackle right here. So I found Aquamarina kind of really went with um, this tag. I love, love, love the um, mixed media aqua colors because they lend so well to mixed media to because they're Stamperia, they really match with the pads that they have and the colors that you get, oh, it's unbelievable. And we're very lucky because we just received a shipment of very, all the different colors. Um, Gloria was asking, can you ever put too much paste, crackle paste on? No. Um, I said, no, but it might take ages to dry. Though. <laughs> it might take ages to dry, but no. I think it's fine. Then see, so this is really simple. So, so far, if you've noticed, a very simple tag to make. And you'll really be able to see the difference in the size of the crackle um, once I take the umbra to this. Because right now, you might not be able to see. We'll just keep going around. This is so nice. It's like uh, really watery. We um, use this to do spray backgrounds, um, stenciling. There's so many things you can use this for. But a lot of their um, aqua colors, I think I can't even tell you how many different colors they come in. Um, a lot of the aqua colors... So are 14. Uh, there's 14 different ones. Oh no, oh, you're on about the Stamperia ones. Oh, no, yeah, not loads. Pentart. Oh, sorry, there's loads. I thought you were on about the aqua colors as in the watercolors. So yeah. Pardon, okay, on. so yeah, sorry. So that's all you really need to do with that part. It's looking beautiful. Oh, they're looking love beautiful. I love the Aquamaria because it's probably one of our top ones. I think I use it in so many projects. Oh, no. <laughs> Just going back in here where I can see I've missed a little bit. And you can keep coming in and going back out with this color. You can mix it with the other colors um, as much as you need just to um, get to the true color that you want to. Um, I only went in once, but if I was to come in again, I could use the same aqua color and darken this tag up if I wanted to. 
in some areas it's a little bit lighter in some areas it's a little bit darker Okay, so now we are done with this part. Our next part is um, to start with the Umbra Antique Paste. Again, um, I think Stamperia calls it Vintage Paste and Pentart calls it Antique Paste. They're one of uh, the same. Um, I don't know. I think I gave you back my uh, Umbra Antique Paste, I think. Oh, did you? I think I put it in your pot. <laughs> I don't see it here. Okay. Did, would I have done that? It's open, so you should know. <laughs> if not, we can open another one. We go through that stuff. Well, actually, we don't go through it. But because I don't see it here. That would have been my bad. Dali had brought over the antique paste, yeah, and what I had done, I put them back on our cell pot. So here again is the Umbra antique paste. Um, again, it's a very um, more oily looking. It's not a wax. Can you just pass me, sorry, the Stamperia Aqua. Judy's asking which one did we use? Can I show that? Or... Oh, sorry, yeah. can I show? I'm yeah, giving sorry. it to Dali to show. So is this one, it's called Aquamarine. Nah. And we have so many colors. We have like sea, yes. sea green. We have a lime, a really bright lime, purples, violets, rosa baby, pinks, mm -hmm. turquoise, um, azuro, like liquid, browns, it? it's gold. Like a, it's <laughs> like a spray mister, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a spray mister. And then it's going to pop that hole back out there so we have a hole so i'll just show you what that looks like with the um aqua color on it okay so next step have a baby wipe ready don't be afraid of using um just dry baby wipe out a little bit you don't want it super super wet I have had this one out for a bit though and then you're just going to take some and you're really going to see the cracks come together now so you're just going to come in and you're just going to do this oh, Deborah says it's looking fab thank you thank you Deborah. we do love it dad loves it <laughs> he's so excited he came downstairs and goes are you starting are you starting let me see the fox again and you're just going to keep going in and you're going to continue all the way where you have your um, crackle paste if you don't want to that's okay too i like to go over the crackle paste because it kind of pronounces it um, again you don't have to use this color um, antique um, paste there are six other colors this is just a very um, vintage one You don't really need much because you're just um, rubbing it on the surface. And just continue working your way around. Bless the girls. We'll let you know which colours she wants. <laughs> oh, girl, so sweet. Oh, thank you, Gail. She's a great one. Now, while I'm doing this, I just wanted to talk to all the local ladies and in the surrounding areas. The registration opened up for my uh, City of Kelowna classes. Just so you know, um, all safety and sanitation measures are in place and they won't be actually in a classroom. They are giving us a nice open space within the building so we can social distance. And also we've limited the class from 12 people to six people to ensure that everybody feels safe. And also the mixed media four week course that I'm doing, for some reason they've had difficulty with that 
uh, registration. So you do have to call in for that one. But Britt called in this morning and told me, I waited 50 minutes. When she called, she waited five minutes. So I don't know. But they do know about it because I have emailed them because I have people calling me this morning, um, early in the morning, telling me when registration <laughs> opened at seven, they couldn't register. So you guys know, as well as I do, you're lucky if you can get a spot after today. Um, so if you haven't done so, and if there are spaces, please do go ahead and call as soon as you can. But don't leave the Facebook Live. You can continue watching, do that after. <laughs> okay, so there you have it. And I'm just gonna get rid of this access on my finger wherever I can. As you see, see it's like an oily kind of residue. And then you're gonna wipe that off. So now, if you want to, you can leave your tag like this. And if you're like me, then you wanna start pulling back. And I'm just gonna show you right here what happens when you do certain areas and you start getting that. And you just tap it where you want it a little bit lighter. So if you want certain areas lighter, you can just come in and really lighten it up and certain areas you can leave darker. So you're just tapping, basically tapping that off. And as you see now, you're getting this gorgeous antique crackle paste um, look happening at the bottom. So this is the antique paste at work. Um, that's what it does. It gives you that super duper vintage look, uh, which a wax paste can't do because at one they're metallic and their makeup is different. So just go back and forth depending on how much you want in. This corner I intentionally did dark. I just like to have the contrast. So this corner is gonna be slightly darker. You'll notice there's a kind of pattern happening there. Um, Gloria and Judy said they managed to get in, get in this morning. Get oh, out. that's really good. Um, there is one person that called this morning. I had a message from Terry. Thank you, Terry, you're such a sweetheart. I had a message that one of the people that tried to sign up um, needs to call again to re-register if there was an issue or something. So I'm not sure what the story is with that. So if anybody out there called this morning and signed up for one of the classes, uh, you might want to just double check. I have no control over what the city does. I just go and teach. Brett too signed up. Thank you, ladies. Yeah, and Brit's all signed up. I think they're on a Skellington crew, so it's been a little bit difficult for them too at the city. So this is what the tag looks like right now. And really, you are actually done with your tag. Now, next thing I start doing is I start playing with placement placement of how I'm going to do my tag. So the first thing I do is I look at all my elements. I, you know, I look at them and I think to myself, hmm, what do I want to do? These haven't been distressed yet. I know what sayings I want to from my stamp, Roam Yonder, Venture Into The Wild, because they just fit so well with this tag. And then my little He's probably still a little bit wet, so I won't bend him up too much. And kind of just where I want want to go with this. Now, I use the, I think they're Tim Holtz Wildflower Die Cuts. And I have just done them in kind of different colors. As you can see, I did these this morning. Um, and I will show you the different kind of colors that I use. I just love this color combination for this tag. Uh, just because the colors were just so sweet. Okay. So you have those. See, it's not very hard. You just kind of place them all down where you want them. Um, so this, this green right here is the Lucky Clover. Distress Oxide. This one here is the Mold Lawn. And the more muted green, which is this one, is the Peeled Paint. Okay. For the yellow, I use Fossilized Amber. I used 
perisimmon, right perisimmon for the orangey color, and then peeled feather for the blue. And I have some more here. So for me, when I'm coloring my flowers, um, I like to make them all different colors, and that's why I've used kind of the different greens. Now I need more darker green in there, so I could probably bring that one down there and have this one somewhere here. So I'll just quickly show you how I go about coloring my my flowers, and I really have no um, special way of doing this. <laughs> so let's go with a nice bright green. So I basically, and then you can go in as dark as you want, I'm just basically going to go in and this is just my way. If you guys know an easier way or a better way of doing this, let us know because these are really, really delicate. The nice thing is anything that you got left on the back, you can use as your for background stamps or whatever you want. So you don't really waste it, providing you're using it. So that's how I do my stem. And then these flowers are quite um, small. So, well, not small, but hard to maneuver around. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the orange and I just brush it up. Just gently brush it up like this. Now, Terry's writing something regarding it. Uh, it's the lady who left herself signed up from before needs to register again. Thanks Terry. Thank you Terry. So there you go, that's that done. So it's a lady who... <laughs> uh, a little bit harder for me. Um, says, Terry very kindly says, uh, it's a lady who left herself signed up from before who needs to register again. Oh Terry yes, says, that would be, important. that would be Judy Mackay. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, perfect. Thank you. Now I know who it is and I can get a hold of them. <laughs> so, and Gail says she's tried calling the rec centre but only got a message about registering. So, so she needs to maybe readdress that. And she said, Gail's also asking, are you using distress oxides? And yes, so everything I use is distress oxide so far. And now I've got fossilized amber. I can send you out a list. And then I'm just going to come in and then I'm just going to do the edges and get it blended. And I keep my blending tools um, separate based on the colors. And then so there you have this flower. And that's just basically how I go around and to color my flowers. Okay. And I also like to just put my little sponges on the back of these so that when I stack them, they all have their individual colors behind them. Now, I learned the hard way that when you stack them, the ink from the sponge below actually ruins the top of your label on your ink pad. So my um, sisters kindly, realizing that, went over every ink pad with some clear tacky paper. And now it just rubs off. So I'm not worried about stacking these anymore. Anyway, that's just a little tip of how we do it here at the show car house. But there's probably better ways. Okay, so that's how I color my tag, my little... Oh, wrong one. <gasps> my fox's eye. I nearly put my finger in his eye. I have to be careful because his eyes are still wet. So, let's move these out of the way. Next step is, like I said, we're just organizing these where we want them. Now, I will tell you that this process can go on for quite a while for me because I'm very picky about where my colors land. If you see, all my flowers are the same. I try to do the same color. Where my flowers land, um, what color, where do I need it um, so it's not overtaken with the other colors. So I'm not going to bore you with how long that takes me to figure out where I do my placements. Well, probably not that long, but 
in my mind it takes me long so you just want some different color contrasts everywhere a leaf down here these are sticky little buggers they get caught up in everything you okay you guys are probably laughing at home watching me struggle with this <laughs> oh, wow. okay so I'm there right now I noticed that I still need some stuff in this area to build up my tag at this point I'm just building I'm not too fussed um, about anything else at this point okay Just going along and building my little tag. So I have loads cut. I have some more here. I have different shapes and whatnot. Um, I could keep going on building. I could keep bringing in different colors. It all depends on how much you want to go. Okay, my next step is then is to bring in some moss and grass. It all depends on how much moss and grass you want. And then what I start doing is I just start placing the moss how I want it. So I'm just kind of I'm going to turn that around for you guys. It's all looking really nice. So you just want to keep building that up, and it doesn't matter. You can use whatever kind of moss you want. I've got a couple of different colors here. I've got this darker moss here too. So if I wanted to use that, I could use that too. I'm going to stick with the greeny because it's kind of springy. I have some in packets from workshops that are still lying around, so I'm just going to put that down. But you kind of get the gist of what I'm trying to do here. You're just building up and you're just going to continue to build up however you want to build that up. Okay, now this is upside down for me, but that's okay. So in my mind, my fox, he went by the flowers. And what you want to do, um, of course, do that bendy thing I taught you uh, to build him up. When you put him down, um, make sure you got him a little bit tucked because he does have a little bit of a cut off behind legs and front legs. And then you can bring in um, a few more of these. You can just, you know, tear a little bit off here and there and you can tuck these in wherever you want behind him in front of him however you want to do this there's no right or wrong way i would probably make that one a darker color just because i want to give it contrast i'm just going to make that one and i'll show you the difference it makes between having the same colors and different colors just so you can give your tag some contrast you don't want it i i don't i personally don't want everything the same green because that's not how it is in the real world okay so you're just building up building up i'm just showing you i'm not actually gluing anything down and then what i did was i came in and i just glued this down because i just thought the little birdie looked really cute there now, I talked about um, how you can further elevate your tag. Um, so this is what this one looked like. And this one I just put some tafta in. Those who got the kit will have this in their kit. Uh, it's just like a tafta thing and some twine. So this one is like this. Okay, so we have this one here. Okay, so if I wanted to continue to build that up, I can take those other sheets that I have that I showed earlier and I can do cutouts further from them and I could play around with maybe I want to have two foxes. Maybe I want to have just a little another fox just peering out just below him like this. So you can just take it to whatever level that you want to take this. It doesn't have to be the way that I've done it you can bring in a birdie sitting up here you can have a little squirrel over here it's entirely up to you how you want to build this up we've got some gorgeous little deer here there are on one of the papers 
and you can bring the deer in. In fact, you could remove the fox and just have the deer. And I love this one because, and I think I'm going to be using this one on this one, this tag, because I'm going to leave it flat. I'm not going to build it up. I'm going to leave it flat. One, because when you cut it out of the one of the sheets, it has a flat side, so it works perfectly. And two, I want it more blended in the background with the trees. There's some deers here. So this one for this tag, I will use. And then that just means um, I just can move these around a little bit or I can bring them down. Now there's other elements that you could use from the pad paper too. You could use the leaves that come with it. Do whatever you want, okay? But this kind of gives you an idea of, you don't just have to do the fox. There's so many elements. You can do two foxes. In fact, there's a third baby fox. You can make a little fox family. Um, it, it's entirely up to you, you know, throw in some acorns and put the squirrel down. But that is a tag for you. And um, I hope you really enjoyed it. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to, well, not obviously, I'm not going to glue this down because I know I'm probably going to go back into it and change it up a little bit. But I just wanted to show you, um, you can use a lot of the elements from the papers or the pad and continue building on it. So I hope it was really helpful. Um, I think you can see um, the crackle on there and how it worked out without me dropping everything. To show you the tab that we did originally. Yeah, so there you go. So this was the first one, and then this is just the second one that I'm playing with. I haven't glued down. But I hope you enjoyed the techniques. I'm gonna get Dali to come here now, so we can say hello, 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 and hello, goodbye, yes. goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing. She's been, well, she's been playing. I don't. If you have questions, you put up there or put in some orders for any of the products we showed earlier, um, and they've not been answered. It's because she's been sitting there playing, making vintage paper using the transfer gel. But I do hope that the tag was um, fun. It? Yes, you can show. I do hope the tag was fun and that you enjoyed it and you learned some techniques. You learned about some new products um, that we carry and how to use them. Uh, you know, we want to inspire you how to use your products that you already have or that you need to get. You can never have too many. And um, yeah, that's it. Go on, show them. She's just chomping at the bit. So this is like a old vintage Ooh. sort of piece of leather. It looks like leather suede on the back. I know. This is just from our the envelope, you know, the brown envelope. Oh, she means like just a craft envelope. Yeah. So I've been able to scrunch it. I've done so many techniques on it. And it's still, it looks like a piece of fabric as well. I have to say. Did you do a transfer on yeah, it? Yeah, I did a transfer. Oh, she's already used the transfer gel without me. So there's a transfer on there. Well, imagine putting that onto a card or a tag or a exactly. book. Exactly. So it's so, I mean, this is a really so grungy hard. one. It's a grungy one. Okay. It's with the finishing Can waxes. The pattern. Oh, look at that. Yeah. So it's a little bit dark under your arm because that side. And of because you've got it, um, because you've got it on craft, it that transfer. So you, what did you do? Just use a black and white image. Yeah, I just used a black and white image just to transfer. Wow. Onto a piece of um. There you go, guys. Envelope. Time to start printing all your um, family black photos and, and start doing stuff. Hey, maybe you can do some black and white digital papers for us to transfer with. Yes, we could. We could. And anybody who's bought any of our digital papers can actually print them in black and white on their lace printer and use those as well. Oh. So I just love bonus. this effect. So, okay, so that's the so. transfer gel. We're going to be doing techniques on that next week. Um, again, they're not on the website for those of you who missed it earlier this morning because I only have so many. I know Judy wants already wants the transfer letters. And transfer letters. Okay, yeah. so no, we've got one of those left then. So that's great. That's brilliant news. Um, some other news that I want to talk about was um, most of you got your Elizabeth Craft camera dies from the first batch. The second batch has arrived in the UK. Thanks, Elizabeth Crafts. And uh, we'll get those shipped here um, hopefully sometime this week. And then it usually takes about a week. And yeah. then it depends on. Um, we're waiting COVID. for another batch as well. And then there's another batch coming. The cameras have been so popular. We're still working on the Christmas paper. I haven't had time to play with it. 
again. So I need to do that, don't I? Yeah, and we've got to do a rest one. And what else is coming? Minte has come in into the UK. So Dali and Paul have that at their warehouse. So if you didn't do your pre-order on the Minte papers, I'd suggest you get them in because we only actually um, managed to get our hands on limited stock because that's all they were able to print. So I think I've got six of each pad or something like that. Uh, Minte's gorgeous, gorgeous pay-per-view, yeah. like Stamperia, Chow Bella, Minte is just beautiful. So we have that. So that will be coming in. And um, yeah. yeah, so I'm, I'm going to be getting another shipment with all these goodies. Anyway, that's all. Really. I hope you enjoyed the tag. <laughs> I loved it. It's probably one of my favorite things. Yes, yeah, I do. It's, um, it turned out really, I love really the good. crackle. I'm in I love just, with crackle. I don't Transparent like crackle, 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 crackle metallic crackle. It's just gonna, love. It's all going to fall off. Just throwing <laughs> things away. Don't throw it. It's and so I'm moving the table. Now I'm moving it today. So thank you everybody who joined us. I hope you're all staying well. We hope to see you all soon in one way or another. Uh, we've got our first Zoom on the June the 18th. Oh, and that was a sellout. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. So I forgot to mention it. To everybody who brought the Zoom kit and the Zoom workshop, that is on June the 18th at 1 o'clock. Uh, no, 10 till 1 Canada time. And uh, we really... We didn't expect the response we got, but we sold out um, of that workshop um, literally within 12 hours um, online. And then I extended it yeah. to a few of the ladies here. And I'm working on a new one. Yeah, and we're working on a new one. It's pretty much done, um, but we haven't posted it yet. All I'm going to say is when these Zoom things come up or classes come up, please, please do it right away. Because um, I feel so bad when I have to say to you, no, not this time around. Um, the great thing about the Zoom workshops also is um, for those of you who uh, took the Zoom workshop, and I know you've told me that you're not going to be able to be present during the Zoom, which is absolutely fine. And Dali and I are going to record them. So if you've purchased the workshop and the products, you'll always have that recording as will everybody else that joins the um, Zoom workshop, right? Is Definitely. that correct? Yeah. Don't want to say anything that's not correct. I guess smack on the head. And anybody who buys the whole kit gets the Zoom free anyway. Anyway, yeah, you get the Zoom free if you buy the whole work, uh, the whole kit that goes with the workshop. And if you have the products and you don't need the whole workshop, then as most of you know, I've been customizing what you do need and what you don't need. And that's it, really. That's um, we'll get some Zoom up. We'll get our samples ready for next week for Technique Tuesdays. Stay tuned for all the new goodies that are coming. And, um, yeah, any questions, let us know. And that's it. That's everything. <laughs> that's it. So stay well. Stay safe. We're going to go and have mum's tea. We haven't heard yet where our tea yeah, is nobody's gone Nobody's come with our tea today. Yeah. So we love you. We miss you. And we'll see you all very, very shortly. Bye. 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 I got alien eye. Alien eye. You are an alien. <laughs> I got an alien, alien. eye. She's alien. <laughs> She's an alien.